Hello guys, and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this super satisfying cloth simulation in Blender. This one is ridiculously easy and very beginner friendly. And this is my original here. Um, here I added a little bit of camera animation, but it's pretty much the exact same thing. I'll be uploading it to Patreon anyway. But the overall idea here is gonna be covered in this tutorial. I'll quickly touch on materials towards the end. Um, but the main focus here is just making this satisfying animation. So let's jump into it and I hope you guys enjoy. So with a new scene open up in Blender, let's select all the default objects and let's delete them. We're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our mesh options and we're gonna add in just a primitive cylinder here. And with the cylinder selected, we're gonna tab into edit mode. And the reason we're scaling in edit mode is so we don't affect the scale. And with everything active, as you can see here, we're gonna go S 0.5 and that's gonna make it half the size. And then we're gonna go S Z and let's go with five. Okay, so we've made it five times the height on the Z axis. We're then gonna go Control R. We're gonna add in a loop. You can see here is a loop when we do Control R, hovering over it. And if you roll the middle mouse button and you keep rolling it and rolling it, you can add in more segments. Let's add in about this many. As long as you have a good amount of topology here, it is fine. So um, we have these little squares and that's all we're looking for. So let's tab back out. Let's go to our front orthographic view and let's go G, Z and move it till it's sitting roughly on our floor like so. We're gonna right click and we're gonna go Shade Smooth. Now we're gonna add a basic little environment. We're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in, or a scene I should say. We're gonna add in a circle under our mesh options. Uh, let's tab into edit mode. And in edit mode, let's go S to scale it down a bit and let's go E to extrude and Z, extrude it up like so. E to extrude and S to scale it in a little bit and then E to extrude and Z to extrude it up like so. And let's go S to scale a little bit and let's press E to extrude, S to scale like so. And now we're gonna go to our edge select option, shift alt, left click on this, this and this edge and they're all loops selected because we held in shift and alt. And we're gonna press control B and give that a nice bevel. Let's roll the middle mouse button a few times to smooth it out. Tab back out, right click and go shade smooth. And if you're really feeling like it, you can give that a subdivision surface modifier to smooth things out just a little bit. We're gonna take this guy, we're gonna go Shift D, right click to let go, and then in our front view, we're just gonna go R180 to rotate it around. And then we can go G, Z, and just move it till it's at the top here. And now we have this kind of column here in the middle. I just think this decorative edging looks good. And let's also go Shift A, let's add in a quick torus. And this is gonna be the thing that kind of contracts and squeezes the tube here. But we're gonna go G, Z, and move it up to about here. And then we're gonna tab into edit mode because once again, we don't wanna affect the scaling in object mode. And we're gonna go S to scale it down to here. And then if you go Alt S, you can kind of make it a little bit skinnier. So we're gonna Alt S and then just S by itself. And we want the ring to be something like this. We're gonna tab back out, right click, and go Shade Smooth. Then we're gonna go Shift A. Let's add in a quick cylinder again. Let's scale this guy in object mode because it's not gonna be a simulation, so it doesn't matter. And let's go R90 in our front of a graphic and just move it here, S to scale it. And let's tab back into edit mode. Let's uh, select this face here, E to extrude, S to scale. Or you can also press I to inset, doesn't matter. And then you can go E to extrude it out to the side like so. And that's all we need to do, tab back out. And now we're gonna right click and go Shade Smooth. The main thing we wanna do now in object mode is select this torus here, holding and shift, select this rod and then go Control P and then go Object, Keep Transform. Now if we grab this rod, you can see that follows along, which is exactly what we want. We're now gonna to come to our timeline. We're gonna to come to the end frame value and make it 120. So we have 120 frames here. And let's come over to frame 20 and on frame 20 with this rod active, we're gonna go I, insert a location keyframe. You can see over here on our timeline, we're seeing the keyframe. If you don't see it, just press with your middle mouse button and you might have to just drag all of this down till you see a keyframe. We're then gonna go to frame 80 and on frame 80, we're gonna go G, Z and move it up to the top here and then go I and insert a location keyframe. And then let's come grab this keyframe on frame 20 here, shift D to duplicate it. Let's drag that to 110. So this is what we're gonna see. If we go to our first frame and play, we're gonna see it goes up and it comes back down like that. 
which is cool. So now let's select this torus and let's now come to the first frame here. And we're going to take this torus, go to our object data properties, and let's give this a shape key with the plus. So we have the basis, that's our first shape. And then if we hit the plus again, we have our shape key. Um, I've covered shape keys in other videos before. Essentially, we're going to just make sure this key is active over here. Tap into edit mode, and then we're going to change this, but we're not going to add or take topology. We're just moving it in 3D space. And then it's going to interpolate between the basis and the shape key. So with key one here, we're going to go, um, let's just go S to scale it in, and let's go Alt S and thicken it back up again, just so the volume looks like it's preserved like so. And then once we're done with that, we're going to tab back out into object mode. And now we can take this key one slider. And if we slide it, we can see how it changes. How cool is that? The one thing we might have to do here, though, is we might have to grab our rod here and just tab into edit mode and just simply grab these faces here or these verts at the end. G, X and in edit mode, just bring them in a little bit till they touch here. And now we should just see um, if we go to frame one, we can still grab this torus and you can see we can still kind of affect it here. Um, is this kind of like, ha you have to kind of find the, kind of like the sweet spot where it works for both of those shapes, but just somewhere like that should be okay. We're now gonna take this torus and we're gonna come to frame 10 and on frame 10, with a value of zero, we're gonna click on this little shape key thing to give it a shape, uh, a keyframe. So that's a little keyframe tab and we have one here on 10. We're then gonna to come to frame 70. And in frame 70, we're gonna drag this all the way up to one and click on this little tab again to add in a keyframe. And then let's come over to frame 95 and let's drag this all the way back down to a value of zero and click on it again to add in a keyframe for that value. So now what we're gonna see is this. If we hit our spacebar, we play our animation that's what we have. Now what we need to do is we need to make sure we save before we get into our simulation. And let's grab our tube here. Let's go to our physics. Let's give it a cloth. Let's make the quality 12, that's important. Let's come down and let's go to the pressure, enable that. Let's go to the pressure value. Let's go with something like 12, I found that it works good. And let's now select our, um, Taurus here, and let's make that a collision object under the physics, so it interacts with the cloth. And now we also need to actually do another thing, because if we were to go to frame one and play this, um, it's gonna work, but the cloth is gonna fall, so we're gonna pin it. So let's tab into edit mode with this cloth. Let's just select the top verts, and holding and shift, select the bottom verts. Under the object data properties, hit plus, and then assign these to that group. So now, if you can see, they're assigned. We're gonna tab out. Let's go to our physics again, and let's go under our cloth settings here, all the way down to the shape. And under the shape, we're gonna to go to the pin group and select that group. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, it's not going anywhere. Now you can see this is actually working and it's a little bit messy because we have um, lower quality steps at the very top, but the higher you set that, the better it'll look. But even then, I think it still looks pretty good. So what you could also do on top of that is go and give it a subdivision surface modifier to really kind of smooth that out. So what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna actually cache this out. So the way you do that is you just go to your cloth, your physics settings, and then just go down to your cache and then go to your end frame value, make it 120 since that's what we changed it to and then just simply bake. And now it's gonna bake this into your blend file so it won't be slow the next time. And there it is completed. So now we have it baked in. And if you change anything here, you'll have to delete the bake again and then rebake it. But that is looking very satisfying. Now let's quickly go Shift A, let's add in a plane, scale it up, tab into edit mode and select the back edge, extrude it up. You can even select this edge here and bevel it, tab back out and give it a shade smooth. And then you could add in a camera. You can set up the camera however you want. So I won't really go into detail on that. For me, I'm just gonna give it a big focal length. And so it's nice and shallow and I'm just gonna change it to 1080 on the render. So it's 1080 by 1080. And I'm just gonna zoom back out 
till I see something that looks like this. And you can animate your camera, you can do all sorts of cool things, but that's all you really need to do. Make sure to save it, and at this point, you can go to your render settings. I would recommend you go with cycles, and then also go to your render and make it 90 for the sample, so it's not too much. And then you can go Shift A, add in a area light, and G, Z, move it up. You can give it some nice strength, maybe something like 200. Increase the size to three, and then go Z, go rendered. And there you have this. You can um, go also give under your world environment, you can give it some um, a sky texture that comes built in. Maybe give it a strength of 0.3 and mess around with the sun rotation. It's completely up to you how you want to do this. I'm just going to leave it as something simple. I'm going to grab this column here and just give it a basic material. I'm going to make mine kind of orangey yellow. I'm going to, or maybe I'll just make it yellow. Let's go with that. And then I'll grab these pillar parts here. I'm just going to make them orange. Give that the same material. And the background, I'll just give that a material and kind of make it gray. But at this point, you can do whatever you want with this. Um, I'm going to just kind of call it at this point. I am going to be uploading my original to my Patreon, but you guys kind of get the idea here. Now you can just render this out. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this Blender tutorial, and I'll see you next time for another one.